Hey, I'm back. Second day of the weekend. Second day of Proc Jam 2018, Fall Edition. Let's just cross our fingers and hope for no blue screens, but it's probably gonna happen again at some point. But let's continue on where we left off in Proc Jam, which was in uh, Paper and Ink Dungeon. I, I played a little bit of Paper and Ink Dungeon on my own because I wanted to find... I wanted to see if there was any way to like get steak for that guy that wanted it for a shield and if that would like do anything and I searched everywhere in the village opened all of the houses and stuff and didn't find anything and I tried to beat the game but I kind of rushed I was like oh, I'll just like go straight through all the doors and like ignore most monsters and chests and stuff you can't really do that because they keep stepping up the damage every single zone. They just do one more damage or something, so you end up just dying. So couldn't really do that. Maybe I'll try it again at some point, but I don't think there's much more to it than that. It seems like a pretty uh, linear experience in that sense, but it was a pretty cool game. Anyway, next up on the list is something entirely different, something that is probably more on the poetic side whatever that may mean. Love Song by Trophy... Trophy Husband. Not Husband, but Husband. And it says nothing about it except a colorful experience about the liminality of human relationships. Enjoy it while it lasts and remember it when it's over. Try again. What? That, that sentence makes no sense, but okay, sure, let's check it out. Oh, well, just launches instantly in full screen. It's very blue. Uh, oh. What? Huh? And there's no sound? I guess there's no sound. Well, let's keep playing my music then. I thought this would be like a musical visual experience thing, but it's just, oh God, I, oh God, it crashed because I clicked outside of the game to uh, start my music again, I suppose. Um, stop. It won't close now. God damn it. It's just a white screen and errors keep popping up over and over. Jesus. Also, for some reason, the game EXE is called Dollar, then like those squiggly brackets, love underscore song. And squiggly bracket. I don't know what those are called. Like not parentheses and not square brackets. The ones that have like a little line in them. That's used for like coding and stuff generally, I think. Wait, what did it even say there? I wasn't paying attention. I don't understand. I guess this is it. How is this procedural generation? There's nothing procedurally generated about this. As far as I can tell, anyway. Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know what we're dealing with, but I guess this is it. And I guess I'm, I'm done with that. Did the game crash again when I tried to exit it? Nope. Pressing... Oh, there it crashed. Pressing escape just actually, uh... Like, made it not full screen. It didn't quit the game. Alright, that was weird. I don't know really what that has to do with anything in Proc Jam. Use the mouse and go slowly, it says. Elliot E. Reinhardt. Huh? Yeah, I, I don't get it. 
that's that one is like lost on me, I suppose. All right, next up we have Universia by Bolderado. Do I know that name? He's made a lot of games, but I don't think I know him or her. Them. Explore the randomly generated universe with unique planets and stars. You can visit every white dot you can see and explore infinitely. This is not a game, just a project I made for fun. I wanted to make it into a game like Spore with type 1, 2, and 3 empires, but didn't have enough time. I had a lot of fun making this project though. Okay, so it's like, based on the Spore space face. Man, I, I played that game a lot, even though it didn't live up to uh, all the hype and the expectations. But yeah. I remember the space phase a lot. Let's see if it has uh, audio or not. That's a lot of stars. W is indeed to move, shift to move faster, space to move even more faster. Great. It's a... Uh... Oh god, that really is slow. And then shift. Still extremely slow, and then space. That's still okay, and shift and space. You can finally get moving like oh, somewhat fast. But can you like actually? Oh god, this is kind of weird. Can you actually get to a star though? I want oh god, I want this one. Oh Jesus. Uh, and I guess we want our music back. Where'd it go? Did I really go that far away? Already? Alright, well, just pick another star, I, I suppose. Yeah, you have to be very careful with uh, the space bar. I mean, it's got that going for it, like the scale of things, like, you go really fast when you hold down shift and W in space, even though it feels like you don't go fast at all, because it's space. There's, like, so much distance in between everything. Well, here's a star. I'm inside the star. Fancy. And then we have a planet. Neat. And then we have, like, Earth over here. Ah, uh, no, not really. We have a pool ball. Oh god, they're all just bright white. Okay. And everything is just stars. There's no, like, interesting space phenomenon or anything like that. It almost looks like there's text in the background, like in the... What is it called? Like the... Oh fuck, what is that word again? God damn it, I've had so many moments of this where I'm like thinking of a word and I just can't think of it. Like when something is in what isn't shown, like if you show text with like the shadows instead of the thing that catches your eye, I don't even know. There's some word for it and I can't remember. Green planet and red planet. Yeah, each star has like a a proper oh god star system. Oh god. Maybe I should just yeah, just use space and not shift. That way I can move fast but not like absurdly fast. Oh, yeah, like that. Absurdly fast. I'm gone. Jesus. Oh, I want to go to this one. A red dwarf, perhaps? Yeah, even this is like, just holding shift is too slow, but holding space is kind of too fast, almost. Kind of Jupiter-like gas giant, perhaps? Yeah, I mean, it's a very simple game, but this is pretty, pretty neat in and of itself. 
just the coolest thing about it is the like sense of distance between everything that you can see like limitless planets but they are so far apart it actually like takes a while to get to any of them yeah some more like variety would be nice they only vary in like color it's like the same shape and look and texture and all that And they kind of just, like, pop in when you get close. Yeah. I guess that's that's about all you can get out of this, but I like it. I can't quit the game. There we go. Universia. I think I've been forgetting to, like, say the name when I start the game. But that was Universia. Alright, next up, we have... Dim City by Prime. Take an adventure into a dark city! Exclamation mark. Okay, this one looks... Like the visuals look very interesting. Take an epic adventure into a dark city and save cats from corruption. You are their only hope. This game was made for Darktober, but I wanted to share it, so... But I wanted to share it to... Horseo Jam too. What about Proc Jam? How is this in Proc Jam? If you completed all the levels, be sure to comment below. No, be sure to comment below. I will comment a below. A to go left, D to go right, spacebar to jump, C to crouch. Okay. I don't know what gameplay we'll have, but Visually, it looks nice, so let's check it out. Kind of a pixel art thing, from what I could tell. Maybe not even that. Alright, Dim City. Credits. Shina Kota. Lipa Sosa. Toxic Theory. Crying Emoji. Okay. Recess progress. Progress. Good uh, settings menu. Oh god. The Doom. Is this a, a random XD kind of game? The start of the Doom. And there's only eight levels. Welcome to Dim City. I click. You might be asking who, who I am, right? Well, I'm your guide through this adventure. Did it say through? Was that misspelled? I wasn't even paying attention. No more of these talks, let's get on with the adventure. As you know, every hero is born for a purpose, and you are the chosen one from within, the spirits. This city has been corrupted by some sort of cat dasi Your task is to cure any corrupted cat you find in your way. Why? Well, cats are the main cause to this desi -ass, except for me. In your adventure, any item is ne necessary, oh god. Even the most awooful, awooful look looking one. Use the items to craft new new item. Oh god, this is hard to read. Use the items to craft new items, especially weapons. About weapons, you can craft the dart shooter by using those items near the trash can, Guarg. After crafting, move around the city and pick our full. Corruption is lying everywhere in this city. Oh, and be sure to craft some ammo from the same garbage over there. Why Why do we need darts? And Okay, you will need the ammo for the dart gun, and don't be a waster and shoot everywhere you will need the ammo to save cats from corruption. When you heal a cat, they will turn back to their normal form and start running towards the portal in the left and arrive to a safe place. Do not rush. Be sure that you heal every cat in the city. As you heal cats, the bar with the dark elixir bottle, dark bottle, will get filled. And as the healed cats enter the portal, the bar with the pure elixir bottle, white bottle, will get filled. You will need an empty bottle, which you can find next to trash cans pollution, to empty the pure and dark elixir in them. I am not retaining any of this information. Don't worry, it will empty automatically. You just need to have empty bottles in your inventory. 
What? That's all you need to know for now. Good luck. I will see you later. Be sure to sur survive or you know meow. Okay. I will just have to wing it, I suppose. Nice uh, jumping sound. Okay. I got stuff. I, I don't know what I got. How did I craft stuff again? Crafting menu. Dart shooter. I did it. And then darts. Cool. So now I have that. What do I do about it? Um. How do I, like, equip it? Oh, like that. Okay. Unequip it. So maybe I should have it equipped. Yep, okay, I should have it equipped. And you right click to shoot? Okay. Oh, I don't know what that is. No idea. Okay. I don't know if I can kill one more. Maybe I should try and craft before I do that. I can't. So what happens if I uh, just can't kill any more cats? Or well, not kill, but you know, save. Just barely. Can I craft more now? Yep. Okay. So is it random or is it more like a puzzle? Kitten! Oh shit, I just wasted some darts, I think. Like, if it's a puzzle and you can't waste a single one, then I'm probably fucked at this point. And what did it say about, like, emptying things in garbage cans or whatever? I mean, I can't do anything else now, right? I can't craft more of those and... Yeah, now this... this guy's gonna get me. Quick, use whatever this is. Nope. Okay, can I, like, jump over him? Nope. Oh, they, like, try to attack you. So maybe I can just kite them? Hmm. Yay, I did it. Holy god, that's a lot of cats. How many do I need to do to, like, beat this level? All of them? Oh, they're, like, dropping stuff. I don't know what this is. the hell is happening? What's this? Oh no. I can't... can't carry this stuff. Uh... God, I'm so confused. I don't know what any of this stuff is. Okay, I toss that. I craft more darts? Yes, I can. And then I can pick that up. 
What? Why am I missing? Come on. There we go. This is a weird game. Like, there's kind of nothing here, and I, once again, how is this proc jam? Oh no, that's gone forever. How exactly is this procedurally generated? I forgot what it said about, like, putting these in, like, somewhere, garbage bags or trash cans or something. I don't know. I don't believe I'm beating all eight levels if this is what you have to do. This is uh, getting a little tedious. I see, I need... Wait, don't I have everything? I have four of that. Two, one. Right? Or is it the other type of bottle? Oh god, there was another one. Did I take a hit there? I think my health is down a little bit. So I can't do that. Can I craft like another... No, like upgrade the dart shooter. I need a gem for that or something. Or maybe that's just dart shooter level one. Maybe I need level two somehow. So then if I drop like... I'll just drop these for now. Pick this up. Can I now craft darts? Yeah, now I can craft darts. And then pick that up again. I, I don't know what's going on. The art is nice though, and the music is nice, but... I just don't really know about the gameplay. That's nothing. And it's not like counting down how many cats I need to take care of. It's just counting up. So when's the end? When does it ever end? Can you just like run past everything and get to the end of the level and win? And what are these? I wish there were, like, item labels so you could know what the hell you're looking at. Sorry, just having a bit of tea. It's a lot of shit here. I kind of wish I could uh, hear that initial talk again. Great. And why... Why have an inventory when there's like... There's nine inventory spots and there's like ten types of items. Why would you do that? Why wouldn't you just have 10 inventory slots? So you don't have to like juggle them around like this. That just doesn't make any sense. So I guess drop this now. Pick that up. Craft more darts. Then pick that up again. It's very strange. How many fucking cats do I need to kill for level 1? Is the music getting louder? I feel like it's getting louder. Maybe I should just start running forward past all of the cats. Okay, that guy hit me, so you can't do that. 
Maybe I have been taking hits when I've been running past them. I just wanted to see if you can, like... Did I take damage there? I didn't see. Yes, I did. Can you not avoid taking damage from them? Yeah, took damage again. Yep, still taking damage. I guess you can't avoid it. And that's the end of the level. So maybe I only have to kill these cats and then I'll be done. So let's try and do that. I don't know how many darts I have left. Why is nothing taking damage? Am I only hitting like one at a time? And it's just picking randomly which one it wants to shoot at any given time. Just fucking kill this... What the hell? Kill the one right in front of you, dumb dumbass! What are you doing? I win! Okay. Okay. Ooh, did I scare you? Uh, well, I guess I could, like, reread that previous thing at this point. Oh, still alive. I've been waiting for your arrival. As you can see, the corruption is taking over the place and we need to move fast. Take the items from the next... from next to that corrupted cat. He seems asleep. After taking the items, use them to make claw gloves. You can use the claw gloves to break lamppost or iron and grab for trashy loot. Grab and garbage. Sorry, for trashy loot. That time it's not the, uh, the writing that was wrong, it was me. Remember, you cannot harm the cats with claw gloves for saving them is your mission. You mean, like, you mustn't or you cannot? There must be new type of harmed cats in your way so, be careful. But why this? That's such a weird, like, thinking that it's two words are one word more than one time. Maybe you might want to be a bit stealthy in this mission. Good luck. I will be seeing you in the other side. Uh, let's just... I... I can't quit. You actually can't, like, leave the mission? I just have to alt F4 or die, I guess. I mean, I guess I could go die. But, fair enough, let's try this one, whatever it means to be stealthy. Like, it's not like I can crouch and sneak around, so how are you stealthy? So this one is... Sleeping. What what do I do, I do with that? Claw glove? Okay. So I have that. Cool. Really wish you could use like one, two, three to select these. Um, oh, okay. All right. The, I'm already full up? Jesus Christ. Then what do I fucking drop? You don't have enough fucking inventory slots. What's the... What is wrong with this? So this is iron, I guess? I don't know what the fuck this is. Is that like a hairball? Is that just trash that I don't want? I have no idea. This game is so confusing. I'm just getting shit loads of iron that I have no use for, as far as I can tell. This is so strange. I'm gonna try clawing a cat, just to see what happens. Holy God! Okay, well, you can't claw the cat. What? No, don't pick it up. Fucking use it. Oh my god. Fuck it, just face tank it. I can't be asked. 
I don't know what that is. There's no fucking way to tell. If that's iron, then what's this? I don't even know. This is such a weird game. Like, mechanically, it just doesn't make any sense. I might just want to give up because it's it's clearly not actually a procedurally generated game. So, like, what's the point? I don't really see why I should even continue playing this, but like, it's it's kind of cute. Again, the art and the music are both pretty, pretty decent. But it's just the gameplay is like complete nonsense and just. I don't know, it's just it's just not good. I'm sorry, it's just not good. And like, what's up with all the garbage you get that you can't use? What's the point? Thanks for the boost. Maybe I should try jumping when I have that speed. Nice. Bunny hop. Bunny hop. Okay, that's the end. Game over! No, I don't want to retry! Oh my god, you actually can't get out of the game. You have to Alt F4 to get out of the game once you're in a fucking level. Even dying doesn't fucking get you out. Okay, I'm done. I'm sorry. That that just is not a good game, even though it has like some neat little aspects to it. I just don't get it. That makes no sense. Oh boy. Yeah, that was kind of underwhelming or uh, disappointing because it seemed initially it seemed to have a lot of potential, but I'm not a fan. All right, let's move on now. Plus Wave by Max Levine stuff. I definitely know that that name, right? Yeah, Max Levine stuff. It's it's the guy that made uh, Inertia, that like space game that we played in an earlier Proc Jam. Where you, you were like a an astronaut and you it was basically Ricochet Robots, the board game. You just like went in a straight line. Like any any ice dungeon block pushing puzzle. It was that that kind of game, basically. But yeah, plus wave? On a distant moon, translating messages from aliens. Okay. Plus wave teaches the physics. Now I don't wanna play it in the browser teaches the physics concept of wave interference in an engaging way. As a scientist on a distant moon, you'll be under pressure to learn wave interference and decipher the truth hidden in the waves. Below you can find download... Wait, below you can download a PDF featuring the unabridged storyline. Suggestions for ways to play the game as a group, insight into the development process, and more. There are also executables for Windows, Mac, and Lin Linux for offline play. Huh. Okay. Yeah, I have the bonus documents. I don't know if I need it. I'm just looking at it now. Huh? I don't even understand. It's like trying to make it into like a kind of classroom type game. There's a lot of information here. All right, uh, I'll just play the game and see what it's all about, okay? Ow, plus wave. Nice sound. What? My colleagues and I are on a distant moon, studying and... and... what? I can't read that word! Source of electromagnetic waves. Oh man, I, I can't... I can't read this. I'm not gonna be able to read this. I have to read it to myself. This is too fucking fast! I can't even read it! Jesus Christ, man! 
I am not retaining any of this information. I'm just like speed reading and getting a general gist, but hardly even that. What is it talking about? This is absolute, complete fucking nonsense. I have no idea what it even says. What? Holy shit. Okay, you really fucking need to slow down. If you're gonna lore dump that much just fucking loaded information at one in one go, you gotta do it, like, a little slower, dude. That's insane. There's no way anyone can read that without, like, fucking pausing. That's... and, like, taking in all the information. That's just fucking absurd. What do, what do I do? Info. What is wave interference? When two waves collide, they form... form a resultant wave. God, this font, too, is so bad. Like, who thought this was a good idea? That's not form, that's forn. And sonation. Like, it's just terrible. There's a summation of each of the starting waves, waves as amplitudes. Some waves cancel or interfere destructively. Yeah, I mean, sure. Yeah, that's pretty, like, basic stuff, like, physics stuff. Some waves amplify each other, or interfere constructively. Okay. Eight seconds per wave, four lives. I mean, I don't feel like I need... ...practice. I, I guess I understand. You'll be shown two waves, and then you have to, like... ...say how they're gonna, like, combine? What they're gonna combine into, or something? Let's see. What? Oh, these two. Uh... I got it. That's... oh man, that's pretty hard. 1% translated. Uh... This one? Nope. Okay. Nope. God damn it. Okay, this is actually, like... I don't even know how you're supposed to be able to tell. Won't these- what? I- I don't understand. What- that doesn't make any sense! Cause they were both, like, in sync, so wouldn't they amplify and it wouldn't be this, it would be like fucking double this, right? I don't- I don't understand. Um... I have no idea. I, I don't understand. I don't get this game. I don't know how you're supposed to know exactly. Does it, at a fucking glance in eight seconds, how can you know which one it'll be? Like if you had the mathematics behind it or whatever, the formulas, then sure. But like just looking, here's a wave, here's another wave. How can you tell? 3 pi? New high? What? Translating the waves was usually work enough for five of us. See, this is what you should have done in the fucking menu or intro. So you could actually read it and like pause. I made it through 1% of it. I don't think I care enough to read this. I just don't get this. This is not... I can't say I like this as much as I liked Inertia. From this guy. This just makes very little sense to me. If we just go practicing. Add, combine the waves. Choose the answer. It has to be this one, right? Yeah, I mean, that makes sense. But this one... I, I don't know, like, I guess it's this one, but... I 
I don't know how you can know that. Just that? Nope. I, I don't know. These all, all these three look very similar, especially these two. How the fuck can you tell me that you can tell the difference between this one and this one in eight seconds? Just like, oh, it's obviously this one and not this one because this one has like a slightly lower like divot there or whatever. Div. How could you fucking tell that? That's not something you can know. At least not as far as I, I can tell. And yeah, I don't, I don't get this one. I, I just don't get this game in general. And I don't really see the point. And I also don't see what's procedurally generated about it. Like, okay, the, the waves are procedurally generated. That's not really, like, what procedural generation means. I guess it is. Like, technically it is. But that's not really what you think of when you think of, like, here's a game with procedural generation. It's not just like, I don't know, this doesn't make any sense to me. I mean, it's the same in uh, Inertia, wasn't that not procedurally generated? I'm pretty sure the levels were not random, right? It was like a set number of levels. So this guy just keeps doing this. He keeps like adding games, making games for Proc Jam that don't actually fit the theme as far as I can tell. Yeah, I have no fucking idea here. This one? Okay. I I just don't get how you can know in some situations. Yeah, I, I think I'm done with this one. I just, this is not even, even if I could do this, it's not fun. So I'm, I'm done. That was plus wave. Great. Well, let's continue on. So instead we go to... Oh, this one. This one I've actually seen once again. This was... Uh, Vinny streamed this in his pack. It's called Lock or L-O-C. And it's a weird, like, Japanese game kind of thing. And I don't know if it's actually Japanese. It's made by Ryan Tra Trawick. Trawick? I don't even know. A short procedural walking simulator. An interdimensional planetary travel experience. Play to the end. Play to the end. That's his demand. You have to do that. And you just move with W, S, and D. That's it. But yeah, I, I have seen this one and it looked very interesting. So let's check it out. I think this is going to be uh, more my cup of tea. Oh, speaking of tea. There we go. All right. Lock. Oh, God. It's very sensitive. I assume if I press escape, it'll just quit. Nope, nothing happens. And I have a compass. Yeah, I remember this. You just walk where the compass is pointing and then you end up in this thing, but you can just, like, look around as well. You can't jump. You can only walk. Huh? Opa? It's the only thing I could read there. Spi? Nah, what? I can't read most of the kanji, only the katakana. And hiragana, ob obviously. Mitsuin? What? I'm very confused. Cool. And are these actually procedurally generated levels? Hmm. I can't say I get it. I mean, it's it's weird, and I like weird, but like, what's the point? 
Not that all games have to have a point, but... Whoa. Can I find something here? It's just a small little round planet. There's not much more to it. Oh, am I like getting closer to the source of the sound? Misupi? I don't even know if these are like actual words or if it's just like random nonsense, like Japanese gibberish. Keep saying misupi. I don't know what that is. What is happening? I'm like seeing a lot of words just repeating, but I don't know what they mean. Maitsui, I think. I'm not sure if that that kanji means something else in that context. Mirapi. I have no idea what any of these mean. Any of these words. Whoa. Totally music again. Yeah, I keep saying Kuri as well. I don't know why. Nope. Nase, Kuri, Kurira, something? Ooh. Ooh, this sounds nice. This kind of reminds me of uh, Discworld 2 Missing Presumed, or uh, Mortality Bites, I think it was called can't remember but when you get to like well spoilers but when you get to uh, death's house okay never mind now it does not but that first thing kind of reminded me of the music there oh I'm going the opposite way Some vapor wave, uh, wait, yeah, vapor wave. I was gonna say va vapor wear, but no, that's a different thing. Vapor wave shit. Whoa, lock made by Ryan Trowick. Huh? Can I find one last glowing orb thing? What? I'm so confused. I don't really understand anything about this. I mean, it looks cool and it sounds cool, but that's kind of all, all it has going for it. I guess it's just weird for the sake of weird, but... It's not really, like, interesting weird to me. It's, it's just... Here's some visual, like, randomness. Yeah, I guess... I guess that's it. Okay! There you go, that's LOC. Whatever that means. 
if there's any kind of meaning to be gleaned from anything in that, I don't know. All right. Next up, we have Sikota N. I don't know how this is pronounced. It's like... Oh! Oh, I see. It's a... Uh... It's like sine, cosine, and tan, tangent, but it's like C co, C co ta space n. So it's sine, cone, and tan. Isn't it sine cos? So that doesn't make any sense as a title. Huh. Well, it's by Jonathan A. Daly, created for 7, 7D FPS and Proc Jam. A lot of these Proc Jam games have also been created for 7D FPS. And a procedurally generated interactive environment whose movement is driven by trigonometric functions of sine, cosine, and tangent. Cool. It's like an art experience. WSAD, WASAD again. Look around environment. Oh, move around environment, mouse look around environment, spacebar jump, R restart game, age quit game. Why age to quit game? Yeah, I mean, based on the screenshots, this looks fantastic. Let's check it out. Whoa. Whoa. Can't jump off there. Um. Where exactly? How does this have anything to do with sine, cosine, and tangents? I mean, my trigonom trigonometry is uh, pretty fucking rusty, I'll say. Don't really remember fucking anything about any of those at all, unfortunately. But this is it, I guess? Oh. Bye. Oh god, did it come up come back like inverted? And now it's back to normal. That's kind of interesting. Yeah. Wait, so that's normal. I guess this has something to do with the whole sine cosine thing. This is like an inverted box again. I mean, I can't say I, like, get it, but, hey, it's a tiny thing that's visually interesting, I suppose. That's about it. Well, there you have it. It's kind of weird. I kind of like it. But there's not much to it. Age. Oh, I think I forgot to say... The name again when I was playing. That was Sikota. Mm. Kind of a weird name. Yeah, that really bugs me. That, like, it's Sikota. Mm. As if, like, you can do C, N, Ko, N, Ta, N. But is it Kon? Isn't it Kos? Kos? C O S, normally? Yeah, I just googled it. It's definitely sine, cos, tan. Weird. It's like, I wonder if that's just a slip up and it doesn't actually like make sense or if there's something else to it. No idea. Let's move on to Absumoria by Meditator. Do I know Meditator? Sounds familiar. Loot Master. I don't know if I played that. A prototype walkable city generator. That sounds cool. 
A very preliminary prototype for an FPS roguelike in a procedurally generated dystopian urban setting. Right now it consists of a basic map generator and some mostly empty buildings you can enter and walk around in. If you try it and you like it, please let me know what the largest map size is that you can play with smoothly. Things I'd like to add. Blah blah. Stuff. W S and D, space to jump, control to crouch, E to use elevators. Okay, so it's just explore a little cityscape kind of thing. Sure. Um, there we go. Absumoria. It's a very tiny window. Can I alt enter? No. I can. Uh, I can just like maximize the window. But that makes it kind of weird, but I mean, I, I guess so. Wait, do you see this differently? Yeah, it does change for you as well. I'm not sure if that's a good thing. We'll try it like this. Map size, I guess 15. Generate map. Whoa. So we're, ah, I see. We're seeing the generation and then we get put in the level. And yeah, okay, this is definitely not smooth right now. And it looks like we need our music still. And if I, uh, minimize again... Oh, come on. I can't do it. There we go. Oh, hey! Oh no, I thought it said resolution, damn. Let's disable anti-aliasing, just for performance. Oh my god, okay. Let's- oh, it crashed. Let's try again. Let's try like five. Just a much smaller one. Yeah, this looks a lot better. And reflections on. Whoa, those are some reflections, all right. How do I enter here? I don't really see a door. I feel like the previous song really fits this and now this song does not fit this at all. But where are the uh, entrances? It said you could walk around in the buildings as well, but you apparently can't because there are no no entrances anywhere. If you hold down space, you just bunny hop automatically. Yeah, no opening. Let's try again, I guess. Oh, it crashes every time you hit back to title. Cool. This is probably going to be quite framey. Wait, what happens if you just drop off? Yeah, okay. You just... Oh! Oh, you actually come back. I thought you would just fall endlessly. That tends to happen. Alright, let's leave reflections off just for performance. Because yeah, now it actually plays fine. That's a weird... Weird resolution, because it's a very small window, but it's not 16 by 9 apparently, because you have like small black borders. Oh well. Is this a door? Nope. Alright, seriously, how how the fuck do you enter in into a building? Mostly en empty buildings you can enter and walk around in. No, you cannot. What are you talking about? This sounds, this sounds like it was a very ambitious idea that just like stopped at a small proof of concept. This is like, I'd like to add performance enhancements, offices, shops, NPCs generated within the buildings, basic RPG style first person combat, dual worlds game mechanic, real world versus cyberspace, hacking minigame to break into any electronics you find, each building owned by a corporation that you can earn and lose reputation with. 
and like all of that is stuff they wanted to put into the game and we just have like walk around empty buildings finally this one is open what bullshit come on man it's clearly open and i still can't get in Okay, this one? Really? Come on. This is clearly a door. Finally, what the hell? And now I can finally take the elevator. Go to floor two. And the lift actually works. Let's go up to the top floor. Whoa, 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 what, why am I moving? I'm not holding anything down. There we go, that was strange. Yeah, I mean, oh god, it's, it's kind of glitchy and it's kind of weird, but like, visually, I, I like it. I like the uh, aesthetic it's got going for it, but yeah. As far as like, a game, it certainly has a long way to go before it's a game. It's just a very rudimentary little like concept of level generation but it's very samey and buggy and laggy but it's it's kind of kind of cool good like little concept and baseline i suppose but yeah there you go absumoria all right this one i was looking forward to Island Pop Photo by Ty Norman. I just always have to check if I, like, know these names, because I'm, like, starting to, uh... Yeah, Ty Norman, he made Adrift Among the Stars, a game that I didn't really, like, get. It was one of the earliest proc jams, and it was weird, and, I don't know, I, I didn't really get much out of it. But he also made this one, Island Pop Photo, a City Pop-inspired photography game. Island Pop Photo is a photography game and walking simulator heavily inspired by City Pop Era, the Siri City Pop Era and the works of Hiroshi Nagai. I don't know who that is or what City Pop is. Explore procedurally generated islands with your camera to take photos and save them to disk. W S D space escape from menu left click to take photo. Best played in 1024 by 768 windowed. But why? I want to try and do it 1080p, please. I'll, I'll just disregard that. Maybe the UI won't be, like, correctly scaled. Let's... Oh, I can't even do that. Okay. I mean, fine. I guess I'll, I'll do what he says. Or I can do 1280 by 960. I'll try that. That seems 